Welcome back to another Hardware News Recap after a lot of Red Dead 2 coverage and still more coming because we need to close out the storyline on some of the interesting bugs and behaviors that we found. But separately from that, we have some hardware news items like Seagate pushing for 50 terabyte drive capacities by 2026, NVIDIA pushing a driver update that one, helps with Red Dead 2 to the extent that that's possible, and two, more importantly, patches several security vulnerabilities that have been uh, discovered and theoretically closed, and the continues to reclaim market share from Intel in desktop especially, XFX revising its cooler design, and some more. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 Master Motherboard. If you're building a high-end gaming PC soon, consider the Z390 Master for its strong VRM for overclocking, properly finned VRM heatsink for better cooling than most, and inclusion of RGB LEDs in key areas. Learn more at the Z390 Master by Gigabyte at the link in the description below. So first up, an update on what we announced last week, which was our partnership with Eden Reforestation Project to plant 10 trees per item sold on store.gamersnexus.net. Through November, we also set up a donation match with them on their website, and we had some, uh, some donors from viewers who wanted to match our other viewers as well, and I'll talk about that a bit briefly. For the update, it looks like we are presently at a, a massive and impressive 43,728 trees that will be planted through Eden Reforestation Project. As mentioned previously, their overhead is very low. It's about 10 cents to 35 cents per tree, depending, and we're working with our distributor to plant some of those as well with them. And between the GN item sales on store.gamersnexus.net, the donations from our viewers to uh, edenprojects.org slash gamersnexus, our match, and then a separate match from another generous viewer, we're at the 43,728 number in just one week. So it would be phenomenal if that continues through November. We are doing this with them through uh, end of the month. And you can go to store.gamersnexus.net. Every item you buy there, so if you have a, a five-piece order, we'll plant 10 trees per item in that order. So it's not just per order, but per item. And that would be 50 in that instance. So you can support us and this reforestation effort on store.gamersnexus.net. If you want to learn more about what it is Eden Reforestation Projects actually does, check our previous news video for that. Finally, the viewer match. So we got a note on our Patreon Discord from one of our viewers uh, known as Max to the Max, Max Eliezer, who also wanted to contribute. So he has uh, offered to do a $1,500 match in addition to our $1,500 match to our viewers on that uh, on the link in the description below for Eden Projects. We're going to shove this news item in pretty early in the video. This was not in the script. This is actually a what, what you'd call a breaking news item. Uh, so I was flagged off camera by Patrick, to, who notified me of a Rockstar tweet for, you guessed it, the Rockstar Games launcher and Red Dead Redemption 2. The tweet says, in our continued effort to fix ongoing issues with the Rockstar Games launcher, we have just released an update designed to address, quote, unexpectedly exited errors for some players with AMD processors. Please restart the launcher to apply the update. And this is actually something we had issues getting the Rockstar launcher and Red Dead to work on AMD. And specifically it was on the older BIOS. So if you do an AGISA code, if you do an AGISA update, AGISA is the binary code that's sort of at the heart of BIOS for AMD BIOS. If you do an update to that, to 1004B, I think it is, from the ABBA iteration previously, that might help for some players, but if not, definitely update the, the download the update and see if it fixes your problems. We should note too that the Rockstar Launcher is probably the most ironic name possible for something that doesn't launch. And also the Red Dead 2 launch uh, has been the worst game launch that we can remember in recent history. There have been worse in the past, but this one's the worst that we can remember in recent history. We have more coverage coming up on it. So in fact, if you go to the GN Steve side channel, I posted my fix for getting the Rockstar Games launcher to launch. It's a 32 second clip and it should help a lot of people out. It's definitely very serious and very helpful and doesn't at all involve liquid nitrogen or sarcasm. 
despite the continued push for much faster storage, Seagate is going all chips in with hard drive development. In an earnings call, Seagate revealed its plans to keep spinning storage alive for the foreseeable future and said, quote, Today, Seagate is the only company mass producing 16 terabyte drives, which are the capacity benchmark for the industry. We are preparing to ship 18 terabyte drives in the first half of calendar year 2020 to maintain our industry capacity leadership. And Seagate did launch a 16 terabyte model for both enterprise and consumer segments over the summer. 18 terabytes is on the horizon. It's purportedly based on the same nine platter hard drive. And this is all on what's known as CMR or conventional magnetic recording for those 16 and 18 terabyte designs. However, Seagate's recent roadmap shows that it has some changes in mind. And one of those is a plan to pivot to SMR or shingled magnetic recording for its 20 terabyte designs due out sometime in 2020. And it's also pushing for a further out 50 terabyte design. Again, 2026 is the current target for that, which will use HAMR or heat assisted magnetic recording. Seagate's upcoming drives will also see an increased adoption in its Mach.2 dual actuator solution, which is a lot of marketing words to describe what it does, but that's expected to be critical for performance for hard drives as they increase in capacity and aerial density. Hard drives have the issue of being all physical media, so you have the moving header on the platters, obviously, and that complicates things quite a bit versus something like solid state technology, but you get a lot more density out of it. So. Keep an eye out for Seagate stuff if you are a data hoarder, in which case you might also need help. But you can continue hoarding data at much greater uh, effectiveness and capacity in the future. NVIDIA's driver update. This one's interesting. We've become very familiar with this specific NVIDIA driver. It is 444.12. And this driver revision is necessary for use with Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC with NVIDIA cards if you want meaningful performance out of it but that also is contingent upon the game working and currently it looks like about 50 percent of players can't even launch it but anyway the driver update also patches more critically some security vulnerabilities that were found in nvidia's driver code nvidia says that some of these vulnerabilities may lead to uh, this is a quote may lead to denial of service escalation of privileges or information disclosure and those vulnerabilities include CVE-2019-5690, which includes a kernel mode layer handler vulnerability in NVLDDMKM.sys. NVIDIA says this is a vulnerability where the, quote, size of an input buffer is not validated and may lead to denial of service or escalation of privileges. This issue had the highest threat score in NVIDIA's rankings. Another denial of service attack vector was found where nvldmkm.sys could use an uninitialized pointer. The NVIDIA control panel also had a vulnerability, quoting NVIDIA, NVIDIA Windows GPU display driver contains a vulnerability in NVIDIA control panel in which it incorrectly loads Windows system DLLs without validating the path or signature, also known as a binary planting or DLL preloading attack, which may lead to denial of service or information disclosure through code execution. The attacker requires local system access. So this one is, is obviously a lot less severe, but it's more interesting for enterprise or business use where local system access is more likely. And as one more example here from the list, CBE 2019-5697 reads the following. It says, NVIDIA Virtual GPU Manager contains a vulnerability in which it may grant a guest access to memory that it does not own, which may lead to information disclosure or denial of service. And as a note here, vulnerabilities getting disclosed as they're fixed is a good thing, or especially if they're not yet fixed. And there's probably going to be some stupid comments about vulnerabilities and haha, AMD didn't announce any, but AMD probably has some too. Pretty much every company does right now. Uh, these devices are not impervious to attacks and certainly the drivers and software are not invincible either to software uh, attacks or otherwise. So it's good to see these fixed. And if, if you're using GPUs in a business environment especially, you should probably update those drivers. Next one, AMD continues to reclaim market share from Intel to absolutely nobody's surprise right now. If you've seen in the DIY enthusiast space, if you've seen our coverage over the last year or so, we've noticed that our own audience, even before Ryzen 3000 came out and sort of dominated the media cycle, uh, our audience has been heavily buying AMD over Intel right now, so we were seeing upwards of 60 to 80% purchases per month going AMD, and there's only two options there. 
So that's a pretty high percentage for a company that does not hold market share leadership. And that's important to note too. So AMD, although doing very well right now in per month sales versus Intel, you should keep in mind that Intel's got a lot of devices out there, like say 2000 series, 4000 series devices still in use. So AMD's total market share is still much lower than Intel's, but AMD's volume per month right now in DIY enthusiasts, which is the space we're in, so it's the one we have the most visibility to, that's where AMD is doing really well. And there's a report out from Mercury Research who routinely handles AMD's market analysis. This report published its most recent information for the x86 market. The report shows AMD gaining market share across all markets, largely thanks to windfall sales of AMD's seven nanometer portfolio, like Ryzen 3000 and the uh, upcoming chips that we just talked about a few days ago. AMD has been playing the long game since Ryzen's inception in 2017, steadily chipping away at Intel's incumbent position. Since second quarter 17, AMD has incrementally gained market share in the client space, and as of now, AMD stands at what has become an impressive 18% market share. That's still a minority, but it's a 5% year-over-year increase. The report, of course, doesn't account for the newly minted R9 3950X and AMD's upcoming Threadripper 3000, both arriving this month, and we will be reviewing those. We expect that these launches will only further spur desktop adoption for AMD. Additionally, as AMD supply improves in retail channels, this should only help secure more market share. And Intel is still sort of lagging behind. The 9900KS is its latest launch, and that's a refresh. And the X series is the next launch. And that's sort of a refresh as well, although a bit, bit better, but it's a lot of the same types of parts. So AMD has made similar gains in the server market. Mercury Research in its report noted that AMD has captured 4.3% of the addressable server market, and uh, Mercury Research captures all x86 processors as well. So this is not just the one and two part configurations. And uh, overall, this equates to a 2.7% increase year over year. Before anyone scoffs at less than 5% share, consider that AMD was effectively shut out of this market and didn't exist in it pre-Ryzen. So big change for AMD's position with the Epic server part launches. Still really small on server market share. People get carried away with AMD's current position, but they have a ton of ground to make up if AMD wants to reach parity with Intel and market share. But this is a certainly a, a big change for the company versus a couple of years ago. About three or four years ago, it was almost nothing for, for market share and server. Separately, there's been anticipation that AMD's Epic Rome CPUs could force Intel's server market share to dip below 90%. Intel's vulnerabilities, although not hugely impactful for consumer or DIY enthusiast in terms of performance degradation, there was almost none in gaming, did have concerns in the server market. In fact, our own web host had to take down servers for a couple of days back when it patched for Meltdown and Spectre because it's on Intel CPUs. Although Linode, uh, we've been running ads for them and they are our web host, they have started rolling out Epic CPUs lately as well. So AMD's last earnings call had Dr. Lisa Su state that she expects AMD's server share to reach double digits by mid-2020. It's big goals for AMD. AMD has also made gains in the mobile segment with 14.7% share of the market claimed. AMD is currently preparing its Ryzen 4000 series of mobile chips. Uh, so this is not a follow-up to 3000 right away. And those should help it pry more market share away from Intel and mobile. However, Intel is actually making moves in mobile right now, even though they're struggling in desktop. And that's by shipping 10 nanometer Ice Lake chips in volume. AMD will face really steep competition here in mobile. As a note on servers, AMD claims an increase of about 5% in dual processor deployments and almost 3% in the server market share total for all, uh, including dual and single processor deployments. XFX, this one's short but interesting. First of all, a lot of you have asked us when we're reviewing the XFX Thick 3 GPU. We bought one, it's here, so soon, once we get through Red Dead 2 stuff. Secondly, there was a post on Reddit by one of XFX's employees noting that customers can reach out to XFX and ask for a copper plate replacement, and I still have one on the table somewhere, for the XFX uh, 5700 XT Thick 2, which was using a stainless steel plate and had poor contact to the heat pipes from the thermal pads to begin with, and thus had very bad memory performance, especially when noise normalized with other coolers. So we're waiting to get the other copper plate, is the, uh, the short version of it, and it appears that 
XFX is trying to make some changes, we'll be benchmarking it the exact same way. We still have the original Thick 2 card, so we'll pull the parts, move them around as we need, test everything before opening it first, of course, and report back to you with how it performs, if it's improved, things like that. And also, don't, don't expect a replacement plate just yet if you have a Thick 2, because we've been told it's still kind of on hold. So. Next up, Intel pounds the final nail into the coffin for Cannon Lake. Intel is sending several of its NUC devices out to pasture, most notably its Cannon Lake-based NUCs. Cannon Lake was, at one time, supposed to have heralded the arrival of Intel's 10 nanometer era, but constant manufacturing hurdles at 10 nanometers have yielded Cannon Lake as mostly a bad memory for Intel, especially in the wake of Ice Lake. Cannon Lake encompassed exactly one SKU. One, the i3-8121U that made its way into the Crimson Canyon NUX. Now, Intel has officially discontinued the Crimson Canyon NUX, with orders being taken through December 27th. Final orders will ship February 28th, 2020. Also being discontinued are the Rock Canyon and Pinnacle Canyon NUX that made use of the extinct Broadwell and Braswell CPUs. Samsung is killing its Exynos CPU development. So while Samsung's custom CPU development of its Exynos products was ambitious, Samsung's silicon designs never quite escaped the large shadow cast by other ARM-based designs, like Qualcomm Snapdragon or Apple's A-series of SOCs, the custom ones. It's perhaps unsurprising, then, that Samsung has confirmed the rumors that it's shutting down the development of custom CPU cores for Exynos chips. According to both Anantech and Android Authority, Samsung filed with the Texas Workforce Commission regarding the upcoming layoffs of employees based in Austin, Texas, where its US-based CPU development facilities are located. Android Authority confirmed with Samsung that the move is based on both business needs as well as competitiveness. Quote, based upon a thorough assessment of our system LSI, or large-scale integration, business and the need to stay competitive in the global market, Samsung has decided to transition part of our US-based R&D teams in Austin and San Jose. This was Samsung's statement to Android Authority. For future Exynos chips, Samsung will presumably licensed designs from ARM. And we already know Samsung is working with AMD on mobile GPU solutions for its flagship SOCs based on Radeon graphics and AMD's RDNA architecture. So we'll see if there's any outreaching effect to that. So next up, NZXT. Looks like it's moving into some audio products. NZXT recently expanded its ecosystem, as the buzzword is, to include high-end audio products, starting with the Air headset, the Air MXER and the Air STND. We're not quite sure what those must, they have to be abbreviations or acronyms or initialisms for something. MXER, STND, wow, that's, that's pretty hard to say. I wonder if there's an easier way to say that. Well, anyway, what do all of these have in common aside from NZXT's affinity for branding that removes precisely one letter from the name of something? Well, uh, these otherwise common words that have had one letter removed are also supposed to become products, and we don't plan to test them, we don't really do audio testing, but it looks like the Air headset will initially include two models, a closed back design and an open back design. Both headsets will feature a pair of 40 millimeter drivers. NZXT doesn't elaborate on the type of drivers used, just that they are, quote, high-res audio certified, whatever that means. And the Air MXER, it deserves it. It really does. The Air MXER is standalone as a mixer that makes use, I wonder if that's what it stands for, that makes use of the 24-bit 96 kilohertz Wolfson DAC, which should give the cans extra kick, uh, provided you aren't already in position of an audio card or other audio devices. The NZXE STND is some sort of, it's, it's sort of like a pillar, there's got to be a better word for that, that holds the headset can't think of the word, but the STND, to NZXT's credit, also features automatic source switching. So that's NZXT stuff. Prices are set $130 for the Air headset, $100 for the Air MXER, and $50 for the NZXT STND. The airline is currently available for pre-order. Uh, don't do it. Don't, don't pre-order in general. No ship date, but keep an eye out for reviews from audio reviewers who know what they're talking about. That's, 
That's not us presently, so don't come to us for reviews of those, but certainly there have to be some good audio reviewers out there. Keep an eye out for theirs to see if they're worth buying. That'll cover us for news for the week. Thanks for watching. Go to store.cavernsnexus.net to support us directly, and for each item you order, we'll be working with the Eden Reforestation Projects and our distributor to plant 10 trees. And you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Helps out there as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.